If you're someone that likes simple preparation of a dish and something that you can put on in the background and get along with your daily activities, then this chicken and mushroom stew is for you. As you can see, there aren't many ingredients and you can swap it and change it to make it your own. As for the ingredients, I'm using 400 grams or 14 ounces of Swiss brown mushrooms, also known as cremini mushrooms or baby portobellos. And all I'm doing with these is just quartering them. So slice them in half and half again. Next, we've got one brown or yellow onion. I'm just slicing off the tip, slice this in half, peel it, and then we can dice this into large pieces. We then need two medium-sized carrots. Take off the tops and you can leave the peels on. Then we're going to slice these in half lengthways into quarters, and then just dice these into large pieces, the same size as the onion. As far as the rest of the mirepoix goes, I have two ribs of celery. I've just sliced these in half lengthways and then just cut these into the same size pieces as the carrots and the onions. Then we need one potato. Peel on, peel off, it's up to you. Give it a wash. We're going to slice this into thick strips the whole way across. Slice these into battens and then dice into the same size pieces again. It's all roughly chopped. It doesn't really matter if they are the exact same size. Just be as close as possible. Lastly, we need four cloves of garlic. I've just crushed these with the side of a knife to bring out that allicin compound and then roughly chopped. And then I've used a couple of sprigs of parsley or flat leaf parsley, and that is also roughly chopped and it's going to be used as a garnish, so it's completely optional. And then the last but not least for the prep, what I have here is a bouquet garni. This is four fresh bay leaves. You can also use dried and about five sprigs of thyme, just tied together with some butcher's twine. And then this can go in the pot and it's easily removable once it's finished. Now the rest of the ingredients, I'm using bone-in chicken. If it's got skin on, that's even better. We're going to need some chicken stock, some thickened cream, also known as a heavy cream, a bit of oil, white wine. If you can't consume alcohol, you can use more stock. I'll have details about that in the description. A little bit of flour, butter, and of course, salt and pepper. Let's get straight into it. Now with all of that done, we're going to add our chicken into a bowl. This is 1.2 kilos or 2.6 pounds of bone-in chicken thigh. Season it well with salt and cracked black pepper. 20 cracks worth. Also adding in one quarter of a cup or 30 grams of plain all-purpose flour. Then mix this all together. Make sure all of that chicken is coated in the flour. And this is going to help thicken our sauce as well as getting a nice crust and golden brown color on the chicken. Place a large high rim pan or pot over medium high heat. And then one tablespoon or 20 milliliters of olive oil. And once that's hot, we can add the chicken in flat side down. And we're going to sear this for about three to four minutes on each side. The chicken isn't going to be fully cooked through here. What we're doing is looking for color and that nice crust. As you can see, that has beautiful color. This has only been about four minutes. So we're going to flip that over and repeat that same process. Once that's done, these can then be removed from the pan and just set aside for the time being, leaving the pan over the same heat. We're then going to add a splash bore of olive oil. We ended up using about a tablespoon or 20 milliliters worth. Add in all of the mushrooms. Make sure they're not stuck in the bowl like they are with mine. Season them up with salt and a little bit of cracked black pepper. 10 cracks worth. Then what we're going to do is just mix and saute these for about six to seven minutes, not 67 minutes. Only until they've picked up all of that chicken flavor, they're golden brown and a lot of their water retention has been evaporated. These can then be removed from the pan as well and just placed into a bowl and set aside. Into the pan for a third time, still over a medium high heat. We're going to add one tablespoon or 20 milliliters of olive oil again, and this time also adding in one tablespoon or 14 grams of unsalted butter. Whilst the butter is slowly melting away, we can add in the diced onions and the diced carrots, as well as all of the diced celery. And if you didn't know, this right here is called a mirepoix. It starts soup, stock, sauces, all of that type of thing. It's just a great mix of vegetables. And we are also going to add in the diced potatoes, which isn't part of a mirepoix but we're doing it for this recipe. Don't forget to season it with a little bit of salt and this can be cooked for five minutes until golden and softened. Then add in the garlic and continue cooking for a further one minute, mixing it around regularly. That way the garlic won't burn and become bitter. Now with the flavors well developed, you've got the chicken and mushroom flavor as well as all of the vegetables. We can deglaze the pan with three quarters of a cup or 180 milliliters of dry white wine and allow us to boil away for about two to three minutes or until reduced by two thirds. And this is going to pick up all of the flavor left in the pan. Now to add depth to the sauce, we're going to add in one and three quarter cups or 420 milliliters of chicken stock, along with that bouquet garni that we made at the beginning. Just make sure that that string's tight so it doesn't all come apart. Add in the mushrooms along with any of their resting juices, as well as the chicken and resting juices. Then we can mix this all together. Make sure the chicken's only just covered. The skin or the top should be sticking out. It doesn't have to be completely covered. And if you do want it covered, this recipe does take a lot more chicken stock if you want it more saucy. It's completely up to you. And whilst it's cooking, you might need to add more as well. What we're going to do is bring this up to a boil. Generously season it with salt and cracked black pepper. 20 cracks worth. Then place on a lid, reduce the heat to medium low, and cook this for about 30 minutes undisturbed. 
Now after 30 minutes, carefully remove the lid and be careful of any escaping steam. Then we can add in 3 quarters of a cup or 180 milliliters of thickened cream, which is also known as heavy cream. Stir that all through and we're going to cook this for about 6 to 8 minutes here until thick and reduced. And I do recommend increasing the heat to medium here just so it can bubble away and we're not going to cover it this time. I also recommend removing that bouquet garni. Make sure it hasn't come apart. If your string's tight enough, you won't have that problem. Stir it through, check it for seasoning one last time, and this can be removed from the stovetop. And this is one of those dishes that's a little bit ugly, but it is also delicious as well. And in this recipe, you should be able to get four to six portions, depending on the portion size, of course. And I do recommend topping off that sauce, all of the vegetables over the top. And I ended up using about three thighs per portion for this recipe. You can garnish this with anything you like. I'm hitting up with that parsley that we did at the beginning as well as some more cracked black pepper. And I'm serving this with some toast, but you can serve this with mash or even serve it on its own. Serve it with a salad, do whatever you need to do. And that right there is our ugly, delicious chicken stew. So with all of that done, we're left with this easy chicken and mushroom stew. It doesn't take that long. You can change it up, make it your own. There is only one thing left to do though, and that is, of course, we can then dig in.